Hello, this is The Provoke Prawn, and this is another behind the scenes video. This time I'm doing something slightly different that I uh, am really excited for potentially. So a long time ago I did a video on this case, which you can see behind me, which is the Lian Lee Dynamic XL. This has been my go-to. I've built a couple of other machines since then, but I'll keep going back to this one because I just like the setup of it, the airflow, and the overall aesthetic of it. And I originally built it with Corsair's QL120 fans, which I happen to have from a different build, and it would look really good because it had the RGB in it. And then Lian Lee sent the SL120s, and they are fantastic fans that are interlocking. So they daisy chain together and they lock together, and you can connect up to 16 fans to one hub, and you can connect them in batches of four maximum. I only have them in batches of three, so there's three here, three there, three there, and one at the back. Uh, and that's all connected to one hub. And there's only two cables that come out of one of each set. So you have three three fans here with one cable coming out the back, which has two two connections on it, and that goes into the hub on the back. So easy. My, the most ridiculously easy fan setup I've ever seen. Um, I've dealt with a few different fans from Corsair, NZXT, XPG now, probably Cooler Master back in the day, and some other ones, and these are just a droid to set up. And they were great, and I did a video on them that did pretty well, and uh, I fo followed up videos with the Kraken Z73, which is sort of also did some content on these fans in that. And it's hard to get excited about fans, but <laughs> one of the gripes of this setup that you might see, and I'll show you some B-roll, when you have the fan setups intake in the case, you have to have the front facing outwards. And so um, the, these ones down the side, for example, they're sucking air in through the rad. So I've got cold air being sucked in from the back of the case through over the rad for the CPU cooler with the idea being to keep the radiator cool and therefore keep my CPU cool and uh, also head down the bottom for intake again same setup problem with this is you then see these horrible black labels on that side and the overall aesthetic isn't quite as nice as the other way around where they've got these really nice sort of silver labels on the front and the RGB is slightly better although the way they've set up the RGB on these is pretty neat anyway long story short now I have the Unifan AL120s, which is an upgraded version of the SL120s, which is designed to look nice on both sides. And it basically has a better look and feel to it. I believe there's some other specs differences. I think these might run faster, so it might have better airflow. I need to look into that. But I'm excited because basically I'm going to have to take out all of these fans in here and install these bad boys. They've sent me a number of them, including the triple pack, which is essential because that has the controller in it. But then, as long as I think it's the same sort of logic, if you have, you can have up to 16 fans if they're connected in groups of four on one controller. So it's so easy to set up compared to something like Corsair's QL or LL120s, which require your lightning node and your Commander Pro or a big control box or a PWM repeater. I remember one of the first times I set one of those up, I ended up with like two Commander Pros and multiple RGB nodes. It was a nightmare. So this is potentially very exciting. So I'm going to unbox these first of all, get some close-up shots of them, and then I'm going to remove the old ones from my case, which isn't going to be in the video because that's not it's not like upgrading to them. But what I might do is take a SL120 versus AL120 video, but also an unboxing and setup of these just to show how to do it and what they look like. And so my plan is to get these fans out, but maybe try and keep them connected so that I can show the two side by side operating and the differences in colours. But I've also got some before and after shots, so if that idea doesn't work out, which might not because it depends on how I can get the cables in and stuff. Then I've got some before shots that I took to before I'm doing this video. And then I'll do some after shots to show the difference in what they look like. But I'm really excited for these. Lee and Lee fans are fantastic. They're quiet, they're great looking, they're relatively easy to control. The software's not too bad, it requires a, I think it needs some improvement, but there's apparently some new and improved software for this over the SL120, so it'll be good to see. And hopefully these will be easier to get hold of than the SL120s, because I know people have a lot of trouble with that. But I'm excited, so let's go!
obviously the first stage of something like this is I've got to actually take it apart, which is a bit of a mission, and I hope people might not appreciate it. How much effort goes into this? It does give me an opportunity to clean up my case so you can see there's a bit of dirt and dust on these fans, so I can clean that off, tidy up around here a bit while I'm doing it, but I've also got to disconnect a lot of things. Hopefully a little bit of compressed air has got out most of the problems. And the biggest problem I'm going to have that I thought of while doing this is last time I'm pretty sure I went through the process of cable tidying all the cables up which means this might be a real pain to get this out. So this is the single control box here that was used, that's used in working for those fans. Really easy setup. So there's just four cables going into it. Maybe four cables going into it and then extra's coming out. You've got two cables per side, so one for power, one for RGB. And this control box then manages it all. That's a really simple setup, but as you can see I have a lot of cables to deal with. Luckily some of them are tied on like this. Hopefully I've been sensible. I've not cable tied the fan cables. I won't know until I get stuck into removing them all because I can't really remember. There's a panel lead here that is held on with Velcro straps. So anything that I know, and this is good advice for anybody that wants to do PC builds as their <laughs> videos, anything that I think that I might end up changing, I try and avoid using proper cable ties on. So power cables obviously probably going to stay there for quite some time unless I want to do a PSU video. But the AIO and the fans are likely to change. Um, and so being able to remove them with ease is obviously important. So hopefully I have, you know, unfortunately I haven't done that, I have cable tied, but they are quite loose, they're not really tight, so it should be easy enough to get off. Find my knife, which I can't, where is it? There. Be really careful, because one time when I was Tidying up cables, I managed to snip through one of the cables while doing it. So this is this is not ideal. This is too chunky. With my knife, this one might work better. So let's see what I don't want to do is damage the cables. I'll get them out even if I'm not going to use them. Christ! I need some scissors. Okay, return the scissors. So now I've managed to snip through those cables and I've got most of them into a state where I can probably just pull them out. Got to remember that some are connected to the motherboard as well. And actually, some of these aren't even related. These ones here, for example, are the Enzovix T fans. And so, let's make sure I don't disconnect those by accident. The other thing I don't want to do is end up in a state where I've got cables in the case that I then wonder what the hell they are. So best course of action is to try and remove them. But what I might do actually is just disconnect the top fans now. Because then I'm going to, what I want to try and do is end up in a state where I can put the new AL120s next to the old SL120s and be able to compare them while plugged into the PC so if I can do it without unplugging things it'd be great. So the easiest demonstration of this is going to be removing this bottom tray because obviously I don't have to fight gravity with any of that. So I think I'll probably start there. This design on this case is fantastic because you have this fan tray which just screws to the bottom and it clips in and you can just pull it out. And you can see they're a bit dusty. It's not too bad. What I might do is take these off here. And you'll be able to see how they're connected together. And 
good thing about doing this is the fan setup is basically the, exactly the same. So in theory it should be a really easy installation process for me because I already know what I'm doing. I don't think they've changed the setup of it. In terms of how they clip together or anything. So the cable logic is the same, it's just the design has changed slightly. So if you've not been able to get hold of the SL120s, the AL120 should be a wonderful alternative, assuming you can get them. One drama that I might have, obviously, is the A120s are going to look fantastic coming out of the box, so these are a bit dirty, so I might need to clean these up a bit. But that's what they look like, and they're connected together in a really simple way. And they just slot into one another. This really cool slip slot system on one end, and on the other end, there's just a power connection. So. If I push this, it comes off, and you see it's just two cables coming out of one connector. So simple. And you can connect up to four fans in a sequence like that. And you can see a closer look at what I was talking about, though. You can see this is the front side, which has this nice sticker design on it. it has these RGB strips around the sides here. And on the back, you have the same RGB, but you have these horrible black stickers and obviously the sort of struts that keep it keep it together and the power cable stuff is all there. So it's not as nice looking if you've got it as intake, which is how I had it, but if you've got it as exhaust, they look fantastic. And really good looking fans, really easy to install. Fantastic all round, really. Which what I might do is disconnect this and run this to the back and then hopefully if I'm clever, I can set up a power so I can set two sets of fans on the desk like that and have them both running AL120s and SL120s right next to each other just to demonstrate the difference. Let's see if I can manage that. The next stage of this is obviously going to be unboxing new fans. So I'm going to get some shots unboxing from above and the side as usual. Get them out, connect them together to show how they work because this is obviously the triple pack. So it has the controller in it, so I could show that and at least how you set those up in a set of four, three. Maybe I'll take one out as well actually. So we demonstrate three and one as the four connections. And then I've got the ones that I took apart a minute ago. I can use those, connect them up to the PC. Hopefully I can fathom connecting two control boxes at once. And have two lots of fans side by side to be able to show the difference between those. It should be easy enough to do. I wonder whether you can get away with plugging one of these fans into the old control box. That would be the easiest thing to do. I might give it a go. Probably should check the specs and make sure they're not differently rated for voltage or something. I don't think they will be. So let's see. That stage. Now. So here's some, there's some really interesting aesthetic changes. I actually thought it was going to be just around the edges. But what they've done is they've changed quite significantly. The fans themselves look like the RGB line comes on, which actually makes sense because that's what's on the packet. Which I hadn't really looked at before. So you've got RGB lighting on the fan blades, which isn't what happened on the other ones. And then instead of having it around the outer, it actually is at this bit as well. But then there's some other aesthetic changes which are really nice. For example, this, obviously that's the black label on the standard fan. I'll do some comparison shots for this as well. But and then these have been redesigned so the cables look neater on the inside. You also see there's these really nice sort of silver accented sides here and here. So the bits that will be visible in the case are now even better looking. And yeah, just I think these are much nicer looking. It's going to be great putting them together. Now I've got all this out of the box, I'm going to do some more close up shots to show the connectors and the different cables. And 
also the control box to be able to show you how you plug these things in. And a point of note is that on the bottom of this control box it says AL. So I don't know whether that means that this only works with the AL controllers, not the SL, not the SL fans. Uh, that'll be interesting to see. And then um, detailed notes. They have some really good instructions on how to set them up and which sort of RGB header you need to connect them to on your motherboard if you want the motherboard to control it. So there's sort of different ways of setting up these fans because you can, it has a USB connection. So the control box is USBs into your motherboard and then you can control the colours via your software, the L-Connect software. But you can also plug in the RGB header cables, so like these ones for example and connect that to the RGB header on your motherboard and then you can control the RGB lighting on the SL120s and the AL120s from your motherboard software so in my case it would be MSI's control center or Dragon Center depending on which version you have installed and get it to sync up with the other things so there's loads of different options on this and that's what I really love about it it's easy to install but you can also install it in a more complex way and get better control over it so Lee and Lee have done a really good job on this stuff and here's the comparison shot with the two side by side items. Obviously, I'm capturing this from above as well, but you can see the difference. This is the front of the SL120s and the front of the AL120s. You'll see they've changed the color of the anti vibration mounts. They used to be grey and kind of chunky. Now they're a bit more recessed and white, so they sort of go with an overall aesthetic. You also see the difference between the fan blades. These are white here, and these are clear to allow for the RGB bleed. What should be interesting is. The RGB lighting on these are quite nice because they run around the outside. It got, runs around the outside here. Whereas on this, although the fan will be light up, there's only a small sliver from what I can gather from the pictures there. Other changes I'm going to have to highlight. As I said, you have this silver bit around here. You did have that on the SL120s, but it juts out a bit more and it's a slightly different look. So it sort of sticks out here and goes at an angle. Again, you had RGB zone on the outside of the fans, and I believe there's an RGB zone here. But you can see the difference between the backs, which is one of the biggest selling points. Is now it doesn't have this horrible black label. Instead, it has a very nice silver, silver one. They've also changed the layouts. Instead of having this sort of crisscross windmill shape backing, it has more of a just a cross effect on it, so it looks a bit more symmetrical. So I got the footage of them out of the box and I've done some comparison shots and then talk about that. Now what I want to try and do is get my PC and to connect up, reconnect this fan to the control box and then try and connect this to the SATA power. I think SATA power alone should be enough to power the RGB lighting. It just won't be able to change between the colour effects without being plugged into the USB header. I've got a feeling that it will just run, so I'm going to try that out. I thought if I stand them up while doing it, maybe I could stand them side by side like that, and I can get a nice sort of low down shot of them, pan across each, show the difference. I have one static shot that sort of shows between the two, just so you can see the sort of overall vibe. Actually, having them stand like this is interesting as well because they, this one, the new ones, sit slightly lower, so they're going to be thinner, ever so slightly, just because of this raised housing around the outside. That'll make very little difference to the build overall, obviously, but it'll be nice to see the RGB comparison of the two. Uh, that's something like going through the different styles, you know, those different styles and control zones now. I obviously can't show until I'm fully into Windows, but at least I can capture some footage of it like this and hopefully it'll look the part still. So I'm just going to try and get my PC in a place where I can power it on and connect them up. Sadly it didn't go quite to plan, I had to plug in the USB header from the control box in order to get this to work. So power and USB is the minimum requirement for this setup, obviously without the RGB header, and now I have two fans from two different control boxes running on there. I don't want to try to run all over the other sets of fans on the different control boxes, just in case there's different specs. I don't want to damage the new fans, obviously, because I've not done the video on them yet, but now I have what I was trying to achieve, which is a demonstration of the difference in the RGB light. And you can see these new ones have significantly more lighting around the fan itself 
where there's no fan lighting at all, but not as much around this zone, which is a shame, I think. But, I mean, it's going to be a personal preference, isn't it? I think that's the nice thing about it. I'll get some B-roll to show you close-ups of these, and I'll obviously include this in the video as well, and hopefully it'll look wonderful. And this is pretty fun, I was just doing some saliva shot from here, trying to get some good angles on these. And I had them one behind the other because of the cable difference, but what you would see was when you went face on shot, you obviously saw both fans spinning at the same time, so it looked a bit weird. Then I thought it might be cool to stack them on top of one another and do some sliders, and that would show the difference, quite a significant difference between them. And so I'm going to do that with the slider and I'll just give you a taste of what that looks like. Get a view of what some of the RGB lighting looks like. It's much nicer on the new ones, although I hate rainbow as a default, but once I get into Windows and change that, it'll be a lot be better. And you can see how much more lighting there is, although I do, I do think it's a shame that it's lost some of this side lighting because this little bit here is tiny by comparison to the sides. But Overall, the aesthetic is much nicer. One of the things I've noticed when looking at the rear of these is the difference this zone makes. You can see there's an RGB lighting ring around it. Obviously, it passes through from the front, but you see the difference between the two when they're set up like this. Let me go back a bit. You can see, yes, you lose this outer ring, which is very nice. You still have that little bit there, but you've got all the glow from the fans and that centre ring on it now. So it looks fantastic from both angles. This is going to make a big difference when it's inside the case, which I'm going to start now. Start the process of installing them all. And then the biggest point is obviously going to be talking about the control box, but I'll capture the installation process of some of the fans as well. So good disposition, I like it about there. Works. Could technically put it in a different place, but and hopefully the rest of the screw should go in fairly easily. Yep. Now it's in the perfect spot. I'm screwing it right into the end of its T crack and Z73 rad, which is held on the back, and then has some NZX T fans at the back, which is probably technically not a good setup. This is one of the things from previous videos I've been asked. In an ideal world, if you're doing push-pull like I am, you should really have the same fans on both sides. And they'd probably both be connected to the Kraken controller. I don't think you could do that with Liam Lee. I don't know how you would do it either. Probably, I don't know, complicated. So maybe it's better off not doing it. But don't want NZXT fans mixed in with Liam Lee's where they're visible because that would just look weird. I suppose the answer would be to get a 
Liam Lee, Galahad AIO, but I actually really like the Kraken. I think it's a fantastic looking cooler. I've had no problems with it. I bought it myself. It runs wonderfully. You have that display which you can put various gifts on and things. And I really like the sort of at a glance temperatures so you can see immediately if there's any problems. I admittedly didn't think I would use it for that. I thought I'd use it for GIFs and images, but it's so useful to just have CPU and GPU temps roughly visible at a glance. That's annoying, there's some rubber marks there after I wipe off. So handy. So I think the key shots uh, that people struggle with with this setup is these here. You have one of the fans from the control box goes to your system fan header and the other one goes to the pump fan. Oh, the Cherry Rainbow Controller. But you've got to make sure you get the right Rainbow Controller. So you've got three inputs on the motherboard or outputs. J Rainbow, system fan header and um, USB and then you've got SATA power so it's those multiple connections and then obviously just the fan connections it sounds complicated but it actually isn't but sort of getting that across so that is probably the most difficult part of the installation now I've just got to do three, three, one easy peasy I also give it a good spray and compressed air on there so the end result should be a much cleaner case, hopefully. Mission successfully achieved. It's looking pretty mint. I'm pretty happy with the overall look of it now. It looks even better than it did before, which is pretty pleasing. Um, that all went smoothly, just as suspected these fans installed in basically exactly the same way as the SL120 so it makes it a lot easier. You just need system fan header, RGB header and USB header and SATA power on the back, daisy chain them all together, whack them all into the controller and power on and you start off with a rainbow effect which <coughs> I hate rainbow but I'll change that as soon as I can and they look really nice from both angles, you can see these ones set to intake and they look really good like that. No black stickers anymore. So now I just need to set it up back where I'd normally have it on my desk and get some comparison shots from what it used to be like as well. So that's taken a little while to do, but the end result is fantastic.